Hi guys and welcome back to part 5 of uh, WinCC Flexible. Um, in the last video what we did was we um, integrated our project with Siemens S7 Manager as you can see here under device 1 and then uh, we have access from our project to all of those um, items under WinCC. Um, what we did was we went into screens and I uh, double clicked the template uh, screen and it opened up the WinCC software for me. I did that just to save a little bit of time because it does take a little bit of time on occasions. So we've now um, uh, got our screen and we've got our template. Okay, we've got main there and we've got our, our template here. And on one of the previous videos, we added three buttons in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight these buttons okay, and you will see that the properties page here underneath changes to the button that we're looking at. Button 1, button 2, button 3. Okay. Now what one of the advantages is of integrating the two systems together uh, under S7 Manager is that if you actually look under the S7300 um, uh, program here is if we're going down to blocks you'll notice that under there we have a symbols table which I believe we have covered uh, we've covered in a previous video under S7 manager I'm just going to quickly open that up for you and you'll see that we have got um, various symbols okay that we've named the main one I'm looking at here is this one which is just a, uh, a flag okay so um, we've got a name for it and we've added it in and we've given it an uh, address and a symbol okay now the useful thing now is that when we press this button I want that flag M0.7 to go high and when I take my finger off the button I want it to go low now we could use the click command here if you select the button there under the events tag here you get opened up all of these different properties so we've got click press release activate deactivate or change okay you could just say on click press that button when you press that button then set the flag high um, I found it's better practice not to use the click there are reasons to use click um, and this is not one of them <laughs> um, the best uh, uh, function to use is press so what we're going to do is when we press the button we're going to set that flag high so how do we do that well we've selected the press and we get here on this function list uh, an arrow if you click the arrow you will get all these system functions available to you for that particular button okay and if you click the edit bits and open that up you will find a set bit so select the set bit and it will be put into that list now anything that is highlighted in orange in WinCC means that you need to do something it's either got a missing value or variable or it's got something missing but it's something that you need to uh, address and sort out now here it's asking for a value so it said no value for this set bit in other words it doesn't know what it's going to set so if we click um, here you double click it you'll get a little window that opens up if you click these little signs here it opens up your project window now notice that you have got under your project which is your WinCC project you have your device now and under that you have eventually down to tags now these are internal tags okay these are tags that you may have created within WinCC only what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our station and you see this is our actual PLC project here YouTube Profibus you go down to there and you will find under the programs you've got symbols and you've got data blocks if I click the symbols you see that M0.7 is uh, available to us and if you click the plus on the DBs and select DB you will find that you also have access let me open this up a little um, you have access to all of the words in that data block 
okay so I've just okay so you've got input word one through to six and if you scroll down you have all of those values that are in our data block one all right so we are going to go to our symbols and we found that we want to use M 0.7 and you just click the little green arrow what this is now saying is when you press this button button one it will set M 0.7 Conversely, what we need to do is then say, well, we need to reset it when we take our finger off the button. So you click reset from our list and our value will be, of course, the same bit. Highlight it, click, uh, click the green arrow for OK. You will now see that you've got a press state of set bit and a release state of reset bit and it's the same bit. So now when I press that button, when we're in run mode with the uh, with the HMI, whenever I press that start button, it will set 0 0.7 for me. And when I take my finger off the button, it will reset it. And it will inform the PLC of that because of the connection. Okay, if you hover over things, you will get uh, a message to tell you, uh, a tooltip to tell you what it is. All right. So that is simply how to access your symbol table. And just to prove the point, as we said, it's in uh, our, there's our station, there's our S7 program one, and there's our symbol table. And our DB1 is there. And if I opened up our DB1, you could see all of those words that we had access to when it takes its time to open it. Here we go. So there's all our words that we had. All right. So, it's important that when you're writing your PLC program that you kind of look into the future a little bit and think how you're going to do things with your WinCC and create the relevant data blocks. Of course, you can add to them. That's not a problem. You can keep adding to them because the WinCC will keep checking your table. Let's have a look. We'll keep checking this symbols table and every time you add something, it will add it all up. So if, for example, I go to FC1 here and I add in a, another symbol, let's just put M0.1. Okay, we're going to quickly uh, just edit the symbol. We're going to uh, give our symbol as M0.1. It's going to be a build type, and of course, our comment will just say uh, dummy bit for now. Okay, we click OK, we save it, and then we can minimize our program. And when we go to this button, we can do the same again. We can click and we'll set it, I'll go for our values, and suddenly expand this a little bit our symbol table has got our value in it okay it's got pull that across a little bit it's got our m 0.1 in there okay and it's got our dummy bit so as soon as you update your s7 your your uh, plc program this will all symbols table gets updated and wincc will have consistent uh, continual access to it so we'll look at it, uh, look and see what it's got, and if anything's new, it will add them. Notice this little uh, symbol here under the icon. This symbol means that you've used this in your uh, program already, and a blank one means that it hasn't been used. Okay, so we could use that, and there we go. Okay, I hope that's been useful. That's just the basics for that. We will go through some of these uh, properties in the next video and you can see what we can do with them. But I thought it was very important that you see what the importance of integration can be and how useful it can be when you're uh, dealing with a, uh, a PLC program uh, with Siemens. Of course, beware that if you are using a Siemens uh, program on an Allen Bradley or an Omron or a Mitsubishi, you won't have this access. Uh, to their symbol table. It, this is only when you integrate it solely into an S7 manager project. 
Okay, for now I hope that's useful and uh, I look forward to any messages or questions and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care now, bye bye.